Hello, everyone, and welcome to Biz Over Tea. We are here to talk practical, hardcore, day-to-day -day business attitudes, assignments, tasks, and operations to make sure that you are running your business in the best way possible so that you reach your level of success that, that's your target. With me today, I have the wonderful Marlene Paul, who is going to tell us all about supporting military spouses, the business of entrepreneurship, how to be a good entrepreneur, and <laughs> all that fabulous stuff. So Marlene, welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, my name is Marlene Paul. As you said, Coach Marlene, I go. Um, I'm also known as a resource queen because if you talk to me long enough, <laughs> you will find out that I know so much resources that I can find for you. But my business is Iram Creative Solutions, and we are a business consulting firm. And our primary goal right now is teaching military spouse how entrepreneurship can be a portable options for them, too. So I do business coaching, curriculum writing, um, anything that will help support businesses. Awesome and amazing and certainly an important service. So tell me, yeah. what is it like? What is the, 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 the outlook for, for military spouses that it became a, a focus of coaching for you? For me is I'm a military spouse, <laughs> so and we joined by choice. Not you know it's like um, <laughs> because my husband came in here and after he got his master, he said, "Oh, you know what? Let's get into that's my next direction, military." And as I became more um, acquainted to the military community uh, and started learning more about it, I noticed that a lot of military spouses, what the major issue is, that. Un unemployment and underemployment is a major issue. So because spouses move so much, we have like 35% of them that, well, more now, like 30, 39%, about 39% are underemployed or unemployed because of um, the const constant moving, lack of childcare. So it's like all these different issues. And as I was a, I was a teacher, you know, I, I was, I'm fortunate I was able to move and be able to, find a job, but when as a teacher, we're just trying to get back into that rhythm, it's really hard. And then once you finally get your rhythm, you're moving again. So it's like, you know, it's just really, it was really annoying. And just knowing that as a business owner, when I was, the only thing that was consistent for me when during the, um, the military move was I had a nonprofit and wherever I go, my nonprofit was still the same. I was still be able to, I was still able to have the same connection, still don't have to restart anything. I just filed my solicitations and I'm able to continue doing the mission the way I want to. So I saw it as a more, um, a better option to take command of my time and take command of my, my, my schedule, you know, without having anybody question, oh, why do you need to take a day off? Well, my husband's coming back, so I need to prepare, you know, for that. You know, control, so, uh, control is important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So Particularly for entrepreneurs, we we really don't like other people being in charge of our time. Yeah, I was like, um, my I remember my husband had to go to a training, and it was like a uh, two weeks training. But the support I have for childcare, like where because he was homeschooled still, that's when we we're doing during the pandemic when they had some kids were doing hybrids and stuff like that. And I just needed to st stay home one day. To watch mm -hmm. because my I, I didn't have help for that one day, but for the rest of the days I did have help. But that's for that one day I didn't have help, and I was asking, can I do my classes from home? Because my, that day I only had um, um, virtual classes and one in-person class. Like you know, my my coach teacher could have stayed in there and I could have um, zoom in, and they were they were giving me a hard time. Like I'm a good teacher, I'm highly effective. So mm -hmm. you know, I do I go above and beyond for you guys, and I just ask for one favor, and they tell me about. If you need that help, then your kids should be in school. I'm like, well, I don't want them to be in school. <laughs> That's my choice. I make a commendation for that. I just need to put out one day for someone mm -hmm. to, to, to that, that commendation. So I say that either I continue teaching the class from home or you have, you know, either way I'm taking the day off. So <laughs> is that I take a day off and I'm not doing nothing or I'm still teaching and it will be okay with you. So it's like I end up having... They end up having, you know, the principal approve it, but the I didn't like that comment when they were telling me that, oh, you just just put your kid in back in the school. I'm like, it's my choice. I should have that choice too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you know, um, and my son was not ready to go back. Yeah. I hear you. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So because you're a military spouse, obviously, you understand the employment outlook for military spouses mm-hmm. as they move around. So tell us a little bit about what that actually looks like and why, why it's such a challenge. Um, because, um, and, and me as an entrepreneur, when you have people you want to work in person before pandemic and before everybody thought about remote options, mm-hmm. um, you, you know, if you have someone coming in, you, in, you know, to your job and your, to be your worker, you want to know that they'll be there long. Right. And with the military, you know, when you come there, you know, you might, you know, just to first find a job is a, you know, a, a issue. And then when you tell them, when they see your resume that you are moving quite a lot, they want to know why. So, you know, uh, and being a part of military spouse, they know that, okay, you might not be there long. You know, you might be there two years max, or you might be there 10 years, but is you are at the whims of the military. So they do have um, things in place that they put um, for a military spouse so you can get hired. But some of these jobs are, um, you know, not, I'm going, you know, it's not at your level. So like, I have a master's degree. So mm-hmm. imagine if I'm thinking, oh yeah, I can go get a job at Starbucks, but that's beyond my, um, my degree. So you have a lot of spouses they're underemployed, so they're not able to um, get job that's meeting their qualification, or they have to wait for reciprocity for their licenses, you know, or take a whole new test again. So me, when I had to go to Texas, they did. I did have reciprocity, but still, I had to still take a whole new test to get another license in Texas. After I spent all these years of my 15 years of experience, it didn't matter much because it mattered a little bit that they allowed me to start teaching um, before um, my I got the certificate, so I had a waiver, but I still had to go through the whole process of taking the test, making sure that I can teach in that area. So, and teaching, so they're trying to make teaching across the board like um, the same, but um, yeah, so some, I think they're starting to do a little changes in that where that same um, process of you know getting that reciprocity for other professions, um, or I think they just passed the bill on that, so they're able to um, get it. But still, it's just a hard thing just to restart all over again. And 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 I said again, childcare is the issue. Um, sometimes you come in there and you have to the waiting list for get childcare in the military can be like twelve to eighteen months, and if you don't have the the financial capacity to um, hire or do private until you, while you're on a waiting list, you might, you know, you might give up and say, okay, staying home will be best for me. You know, I was fortunate that, you know, me paying for a private childcare um, was better than me staying home because my teaching profession job made enough money that I can cover it. But that's a good big chunk <laughs> of that, you know, but some spouses do not have that option where, you know, there because a minimum wage job might not be able to cover the childcare. It was not it will not be worth it for that. So, um, yeah, the waiting list being is just a little bit too long. <laughs> I yeah. hear you, and the, the childcare waiting list it's it seems like it's massive no matter where you go, and mm-hmm. especially at the younger ages. Yeah. So yeah, shift and focus now from from employment to entrepreneurship which is the, mm-hmm. the option that, that works best for us, of course, and hopefully yeah. for many of your, many of your, your, the, your clients. Tell me uh, the burning thing. How do you start a business when you're mobile all the time? If you're always moving and you don't know where, you, where you're going to end up or how long you're going to be there, tell me about options and plans. How do we get started there? Well, first, you know, registering with your local state, you know, just trying to go through that process. Once you figure out what you're going to do, figure out how, like, you know, the options of making it mobile, you know, um, of where you can take it with you. So you just start, I mean, register with your local state um, and getting all the whole regular structure that you would do with any business. And when you're um, about to move, you know, whenever you go to a different um, duty station, you're able to register your business with that station. You know, so you're not, you know, it's easier to file, um, I guess, another um, 
office, home office there. You know, like how Walmart have home office everywhere. You know, uh, um, Amazon have home offices anywhere. You can still do that because you can put that your uh, your your business is a mobile business. So me, if I were to move to Texas right now, you know, if I you know I still I still have my main office here, and transferring everything with a Secretary of State is you know it's it's easier to transfer everything than it is to you know and still do the same consistent benefit because people will still buy from you. You know, there's with, with the new, with, with after COVID, all these different things, everything's a remote now. So you have that little option of being more remote, selling online. So it's just different ways of doing business because um, I'm always traveling, you know? Uh, I, and that's one thing I put on my vision board as an entrepreneur, I want to be traveling because I don't do business only in one area. And and when you get into the air arena where you're doing contracting, because that's my next direction, with my business, it's like doing in government contracting. You don't have to be in the state <laughs> that you're contracting with, so it it opens up a a door that um to a global um way of of doing things. So I would just say just start getting your, your structure in place with wherever you're at right now, because most likely the the business owner will be there. You know, you will be there for at least um two years. Sometimes the the contracts are usually two years, and they give you. Notice that when you're um, going to move. So when you know you're where you're going to move, and you definitely know where you're going to move, you know, uh, you can start a process of saying, okay, um, what do I need to do for that other state? You know, what is the thing? Just to make sure, because there they are exemptions and for military spouses. Once you get a military own certification, if you're a vet, you have the vet own certifications. All these different things that they provide for military um, entrepreneurs. That we don't know, so um, my whole my whole advice to military spouses is, I would first once you're once you're getting in that idea, okay, I'm gonna be more on an entrepreneur route. Contact your um, boost to business um, department for your area, and they'll walk you through it. They have a whole team that's dedicated not only for vets but for the military spouses of helping you structure your business in a way that you are able to go everywhere. So, um, and I didn't learn about that until after my, my, my husband um, left active duty and now reserve. So like y'all had all this <laughs> all the wrong and y'all are gatekeeping <laughs> information. So I'm here to like blow the whistle. <laughs> on that <thing. laughs> Go there. They need you. I hear you. Yeah. Okay. So thinking of that and thinking of the challenges with employment versus the comparative simplicity of, of starting a business in multiple places, what kind of mindset do you need to choose running a business over finding a job? That's a whole thing. I would say more of a growth mindset. I'm going through the education route, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, thinking that, every, you know, the growth mindset was just like, Knowing that everything can, when seeing the possibilities in different things, even if you fail, embracing the failure uh, mm-hmm. and learning from it, you know, um, having that problem solving skills, that's really important. So um, have it, you really have to have that grit <laughs> to go through it and, and be hungry enough for it because it's not easy. I have nights I cry, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I was like, why did I choose this? It's like I left my nine to five and I'm working 24-7, you know? <laughs> but you're at least I'm working in something I'm passionate about. I'm not working for somebody else's passion. And um, so once you're doing that, you know, you're pushing forward in that. You just know that, okay, I may fail. I may, you know, but it's just I'm going to continue to push forward. So it's really, um, that, I think I'm focused on growth mindset and grit. You know, I know it might be cliche words, but it's just like, you have to push yourself beyond um, what you would necessarily do. So if you're thinking it's going to be all easy as an entrepreneur, it's not easy. <laughs> the civilian side and the military side, there's challenges. We have a unique challenge as a military spouse because we go through that um, doing businesses during deployment. But for me, um, I saw deployment as an opportunity for professional growth. So it's just the way you look at things. So when he is gone, this is when I go more deeper in my business, learn, because I don't have no one. I can stay up until midnight and not worry about not going to bed because my husband is not sleeping. I'm able to work 24-7 and not feel guilty 
about it. I just make sure I take care of my son and I and I eat, you know, and and he when he go to sleep, I come, I wake up and I work and I do what I got to do. So it, it, I just see it as an opportunity to push through it, you know, and, and not dwell on, oh, he's not here and I'm lonely. No, he's not here. Let me take advantage to work. So when he come back, I can focus. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and we know what that's a good balance to have. So that you know that when he when he's home, that you can, you know, relax and spend time, and you're not mm-hmm. neglecting your business because you did a little extra in those in those down mm-hmm. times. Yeah. So, yeah. speaking of mindset and grit and moving forward, what does it take? What do you feel it takes to become a successful entrepreneur? Now, I'm not saying having a successful business because sometimes. And I, I'm I'm living proof. Sometimes it may take four or five different businesses before you get it right. <laughs> yeah. But entrepreneurship, what do you think it takes to run through those four or five businesses and stick with it, knowing that, you know, it's a 50-50 on failure or success? No, oh, that's a really great question. And I know, you know, it's like for me, what's been what I believe, but what everybody needs, it's a good support system. You know, you need to find your, you know, people say find your tribe, find your community. I have community for variety, various area in my life, you know, and with, you know, as a military spouse too, when you go to um, station to station, <laughs> you know, one other thing is you're trying to find someone quickly that you can trust quickly to, that, you know, you can use as an emergency contact you know, to have to pick up because you need to be able to put them on their list to say, okay, this is the person who's going to pick up my son in case I am not there. Mm-hmm. So um, I have learned, and uh, you know, and I've learned to do it a little bit more quickly since my, we've been part of the military, is to build connections, to find a community, try to build. Then the only way you can build relationship is to put yourself out there and find a group, <laughs> you know, a little by little, and do mm-hmm. life with them. And as you do life with them, you'll be able to build that trust. And as you build that trust muscle, you know, you will find that person, that, that group of community that will encourage you throughout. So I have communities for business areas, that I'm for uh, for different business areas. So um, I have an accountability partner that helped me to make sure, did you do this? You know, what's your, t- no, send me your, your to-do list. Let's Let's keep each other accountable. And I have a community where I'm interested in going in government contracts. And so we have our little group chat say, hey, did you put a contract out today? Hey, here's my winning. Here's my challenge. You know, you need to be in a part of a group that supports you, that you can be transparent, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, because that's, that's the important time. You, you know, the important one part is like being transparent and that dual take that transparency with care and support and not use it against you. So it's being very intentional in your relationships um, that, you know, that's worked for me. And I feel like um, for, for entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, that's really essential because sometimes the journey as an entrepreneur can be lonely and you don't want to do it alone, you know? Uh, and this is why I, I seek um, community everywhere I go. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So I hope that is excellent question. advice. <laughs> Because it, it can it can certainly be lonely, particularly if you're running multiple businesses by yourself like, from mm-hmm. home. And you right, have to so. who knows um, who knows what you're going through, who had that same who is not in that same bubble with you. So you know you can't have a, a, a accountability partner who is not an entrepreneur, and you're holding you accountable for entrepreneur things because they won't get it. You know, right. I can't have accountability for government contracting when they're even if they're an entrepreneur. And they're not into a government country because they don't know what it is and they, they don't get it. So you need to have a community that gets <laughs> where you're going. Yeah. yeah, having a community that gets it is, is very, very important. That's excellent advice. Okay, so what's your best advice for keeping a business running apart from having the support outside the business? Keeping the business running? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't, I, and for me, it's just like having a schedule, <laughs> having mm-hmm. a plan, and following your plan. That roadmap is important. You know, uh, that's the one thing. The two things. First is that plan. You know, writing it down mm-hmm. and following the plan, and then having a, a someone who's a, who, who's ahead of you that can guide you through it. Um, 
that knows, you know, that, that coaching aspect is important. Professional, you know, because they either coach you and then also professional development. You know, just, okay, I'm always training. I'm always learning. You know, as an entrepreneur and keeping your business learning and running, you have to sorry, continue learning your industry, continue learning what's going on out there, seeing where you're able to stay two steps of the, the, ahead of the game so you don't fall behind, you mm-hmm. know, so you know what's going on. So if you see um, something is coming on the pipeline, you just start saying, let me see how I can pivot my business and keep it going. So major issue is, you know, staying um, abreast of what's going on and being able to say, okay, you know, this this is what's coming on. Let me see how I can pivot my business and not be afraid of doing that. It's okay to pivot. You know, how do you say you have multiple business? It's okay to pivot as your business owner and, and try to um, keep on moving your business. Yeah. Yeah. Good deal. Yeah. So coming back to your clients, have you noticed any recurring attitudes, things that, that might typically hold, hold them, hold the military us back? From starting a business, um, one thing is fear. Mm-hmm. You know, fear. You know, like okay, that they'll be not, you know, not be successful in that. Um, and um, the finance wise, okay, how will I do it? You know, it, it, starting up. You know, being an entrepreneur is not cheap. <laughs> you know, the startup. You know, you have to have a plan um, before doing that. So part of that is like, okay, how do I um, start this business? Um, with my limited budget and the fear that it might not work work out. So that's a majority of it. And then the second part is like they don't know that that was an option for them. So once they start, you know, when, so they have that idea, okay, I know about it. Now, um, what do I do next? And they need that guidance. And sometimes the guidance that they are seeking, you know, um, the military have different resources that are good and give you the overview of it, but they need someone to like walk them through it. And Sometimes people don't share how they got through it, you know, and this is why I don't mind sharing because my whole attitude is the people that I need to reach, I'll reach. The people you need to reach, you'll reach. So there's enough fish in the sea for right. everyone that we can support and uplift each other. So I'm not, you know, I will show you the ropes. I will show you how to get there and and, and celebrate you as it succeeds. So, um, but it's just that that guidance. So people don't know where to go, how to turn, how to start, <laughs> you know, <laughs> how to start. <laughs> yeah. All right. And so here's my last question. I'm going to throw monkey wrench in all, all of our conversation today. <laughs> okay. Can you run a business if you don't have an entrepreneurial mindset? That's, I, that's <laughs> really hard. <laughs> Can you? Because like, like most people are running a business, you know, you don't have that mindset. It's, it, it won't last long. You know, you start getting drained. So, you know, you did throw monkey wrench in there. But it's really hard because majority of people who still run a business, they have, uh, to a certain degree, that mindset. You know, mm-hmm. whether they whether they later on, they wane off. Where, you know, it's like, okay, I have the mindset. I want to start a business. But then. It comes with tenacity. Do you have the tenacity to continue to maintain and work on it? So, um, you know, I would say yes and no because <laughs> you need that mindset to run that business because otherwise you'll end up selling your business. I give up. <laughs> I'm done. I'm closing my business. <laughs> because I have never seen so far with all the entrepreneurs that I've met before, I haven't seen um, those who are, you know, moving forward mm-hmm. uh, in their business to be having a different mindset than what I have. So, um, you know, there's a few that do have that, that don't have that entrepreneur m- mindset. And those are the few that say, okay, I just want it to be done for me. And then, and then I get the money. I'm like, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> you have to work. <laughs> you know, you're going well, to, I mean, it, I think you could <laughs> assemble a team. If, if you, if you find a team that you trust enough, but, but that comes I would say probably you're, you're an investor rather than a business owner. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, yeah, that's that's right. That's the key thing. You're an investor. You're investing your money, and then the team is taking care of everything. And they have the entrepreneur mindset for you, and you're praying that they would keep do right with the money and make sure they give you your part. Um, right. So, yeah. Okay. That, that's my new answer <laughs> to the question. <laughs> yes, you can be an investor. And, 
That's a business. You know, venture capitalism is a business. <laughs> Marlene, thank you for a fabulous talk. How can our fabulous audience contact you to get support, particularly our, our followers who are military spouses all over the place? Well, the best place is LinkedIn. I'm on, on LinkedIn on, as Coach Marlene Paul and on my website, um, Elaram Creative Solution. I guess I can give you the spelling, <laughs> but it's basically my we'll, name. We'll, we'll put it in the link if you need me. <laughs> Spell backwards. <laughs> You know, um, you just go to the website and on there, you know, you click um, the join us for our, our virtual lunches and we will connect there. You know, I, I love talking to military spouse. You know, um, I love that. It's just having that conversation and because we do connect on such different levels. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for a fabulous biz over tea. I didn't I didn't have my hot beverage today, but. Uh, Imagine that there's tea over there on, on my table. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you for joining for another episode of Biz Over Tea. Stay hydrated, stay hot, and stay focused on your business. Have a good time. See you next time.